everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 3. I am so excited to be back playing this game. It's been like two days. Uh, after the emotional last couple of episodes, I have been doing finals and stuff and I all day long have been working on my finals and I turned a presentation and stuff in today. And that's boring stuff, let's play the game, but good golly, I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> oh right, you got all kinds of new things, great. Oh man, so much to do. So this is how it's gonna be then, is that um, do a main mission, go back to the Citadel and get a crap ton of, of, of missions and then do most of them. And you know, maybe we should do the Leviathan. Maybe we should, uh, maybe we should do that. Kind of Jellix, good. the second oh, planet in it? the Arai system is a marginally habitable world of mountains and ice. Hmm. The planet was turned into a human penal colony upon its discovery in 2161. Hmm. But it alternate An unremarkable world located far from regularly traveled trade routes, Lessus is inhabited only by a small oh. Asari colony. The main feature is a monastery that houses a large population of Asari with active or latent Ardot Yakshi genes. A disorder that causes the death of anyone who mates with the afflicted Whoa. Asari. Although some of the colonists exiled themselves voluntarily, many were sent to Lessus by their families to protect society. Okay, well, whatever mission is that, we're doing that. To chunk because, it. actually, that's, um, I just finished writing a paper about that today in my Buddhist philosophy class of all things. I wrote a paper about, um, um, Samara, and, because I accidentally did, like, a Freudian slip of all things, you know, um, and accidentally called her samsara which is actually a buddhist state of being and it's it's like the it's kind of like the world we currently inhabit and what it means is it's a, it's a state of suffering like this being alive means that you're pretty much constantly in a state of suffering um but i mean it's way more depth way more into that than than what i can say right now um just because oh man but yeah, I just finished writing a paper about the Ardot Yakshi and Samara and like everything today. Like my my teacher was like, "Hey, what do you like? What do you want to do?" type thing, and um, he's like, he just I don't know, like he just let me write a paper. Like I explained to him, like, "Oh, this was thing." I didn't even ask him what I wanted to do. He was just like, "Oh, you're doing all right," and I was like, "Yeah, I'm fine," you know. And he was just checking up on me, and but somehow we got into the subject of like this the Buddhism connection in this video game, which is my senior thesis, uh, related in my senior thesis, and he was like, oh, well, you want to write a paper on that instead of doing this? And I was like, oh my gosh, yes, I just finished that today, and, uh, hopefully I can keep working on it actually in the next semester. Oh, crap. Here's a clear picture. Counselor Udina has attempted a coup and will not be analyzed for generations to come, but a clear picture is beginning to emerge. Udina had contacted Cerberus to coordinate what was intended to be a bloodless takeover of the Citadel, in which he would force the other counselors uh, to grant him emergency power so he could command the Citadel fleet. He would then direct the fleet to liberate his homeworld, Earth. The plan fell apart early when Executor Palin... So that is who he is. And the Salarian counselor caught wind of it. Who is Executor Palin? Gosh dang, I can't think of him. In the defense in defense of the plan, the elusive man dispatched his top assassins, commanded by Kai Ling, to kill them. Udina had little choice but to support the assassins with an armed force sufficient to hold the citadel. The captured confidants have indicated that Udina and Ling's alliance was relatively fragile. Udina may have planned to turn on Cerberus once the fleet was his to command, and Ling departed when he calculated that Udina would not succeed. Persistent rumors suggest that Udina might have been a high functioning victim of reaper indoctrination, I was wondering. His actions played right into the Reaper's plans. Even if the coup failed, it would damage the Citadel, it would damage Citadel governance. If it succeeded, his plan to retake Earth would likely have turned into a military blunder that Council forces could ill afford. However, there is no direct evidence of his indoctrination nor obvious opportunity. Yeah, as I say, where, how would that have happened? It is more likely that Udina acted out of desperation, and in doing so, cost humanity its counselor. Ah, see, I knew it. He was kind of a jerk there at the end, but yeah, I knew like he is an ambitious man, but he was also a very desperate man and a very determined man. So I would I would like to think I'm I'm glad that this that they showed this because I'm like there has to be another reason 
for everything he did. But I'm glad I'm glad that came. I figured that had to be the reason. That's actually that's really interesting. Could be analyzed for generations to come. Maybe I will do that in a paper. But a bloodless takeover. I wonder what the elusive man would have done like if he if this had all succeeded as a bloodless takeover, you know? Because I don't think the elusive... Well, a bloodless takeover would be easier than a bloody one, obviously. So the elusive man could probably see the... He's probably one of the smartest men alive, the elusive man. Like, I do not underestimate him. And I don't think he's just some crazy sociopath. He is a brilliant, brilliant man. So it would be unwise to just, you know, write him off as a crazy person. Because he's a crazy person with a plan and the means to the plan. Um... Yeah, and I can't see Udina and Lang getting along because Lang, apparently, according to his dossier, just enjoys violence. And Udina was trying... Udina was trying to save Earth. The main point of all of this is that Udina was trying to save Earth and his methods were not good. And it backfired and it killed him. But that was the risk he took and he probably knew it going into there. Uh... Is this the colony? Oh! <gasps> I totally want to go see the rest of the R. Yakshi because that looks really, really cool to me. What is that? Nope. Okay, I think I think it's this one. Whatever. It, Masana. Anasari Colony. Oh, oh, oh! I'm so excited. Where am I right now? I'm in this place. Okay. I guess I could have just looked. Um. Oh, let's go to the captain's cabin really quick and look at my jellyfish. I'm so excited. So excited about I'm so excited to be playing this game again. Ugh. I am just like everybody's been like shut up. Shut up. Cause like all day I'm like, I just wanna play. <laughs> what? 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 Oh right, no, not right now. <gasps> Look at they're so tiny. <gasps> oh it's my squishy. And he shall be my squishy. Oh my gosh, look at their wiggling. They're not just like, they're not just like holding still. Like they're like move the little gelatinous selves. They're like gelatinity, gelatinity. <laughs> they're so cute. Oh, let's feed you. Yeah. I wonder if you can kill them by overfeeding. Uh, jellyfish are supposed to be in their own tank. I'm pretty sure you can't keep them in with other things unless you want those other things to die. And they actually have to be in circular tanks um, because jellyfish don't move on their own. They're, they move uh, strictly by ocean currents and they're very, very delicate. And if they, that's why they float. They're always in open water. Um, and so they, uh, if you have them in a, cor like a, a cage or a tank with corners, they will... Uh, they can hurt themselves or get stuck or something and they have to have like specialized um, pumps so that they can move in a constant circle like their tanks have to be circular because of the circulation the circulation has to constantly be going in a circle like it has to it can't just stop it can't just it can't just throw them into the side of the tank and kind of stop and slide them down or something it has to be a constant circulation so that they can like move around and everything and they can um hit the proper, their own proper, proper circulation and they can eat and everything because the food has to come to them. Um, so yeah, you can, I, you can kind of see, oh, that one just blew over from over, from over there. Um, but there, so this isn't quite correct. They probably wouldn't, they would, uh, yeah, even in, I mean, even in aquariums, if you look, they're always in circular tanks. Um, and they're constantly kind of going in a circle, um, because they have the pumps that, constantly moves them in a circle like that. There was a guy who came into my work the other day and he worked, he builds fish tanks. I'm just going to stare at these for a while and you guys can fast forward, but I'm just so excited about this. Um, but he says that he built a, a jelly, when I mentioned it, he was like, oh yeah, these fish are really cheap. You know, saltwater fish is really expensive. He started talking about saltwater stuff and he was like, I was like, yeah, I'm like, I really love jellyfish. Like, I'd love to get a jellyfish tank someday. And he's like, oh, I just put the jellyfish t fish tank for a guy. He's like, yeah, it was um, two stories tall, and his uh, stairwell wraps around it. I was like, are you flipping kidding me? Like, 
who can who has the money to build like a freaking like 20 foot jellyfish tank a jellyfish tank of all things and it's circular right and then it just like the stairwell just goes whoosh like all the way up all the way up wraps around it i was like oh my gosh i will sell my kidneys to get that Ugh, i'm just so happy to be playing this game i'm so happy i have jellyfish i'm gonna have to come up here every time now people are probably punching themselves in the face but Look at that. Yeah, I've looked I've looked into getting jellyfish. <laughs> In case you can't tell. Trainer, can you send Diana up? <sighs> she wanted an interview. Uh, right. Why, Commander? Why in my don't be jealous. Ready for Trainer. a chat, Commander? No. I'm ready. We just had a chat. Commander. I feel like it's you can no hear me. secret that Council Space has suffered some serious losses to the Reapers lately. Can't you prep me? Now Cerberus has struck directly at the seat of our government. It's not our government. If something as small as a human terrorist organization can hit the Citadel, is anywhere safe? I'm so glad my look, even this is high enough. That's 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 odd. I wonder what like what would you have to do to only have that option, you know? Cerberus has limited resources. This coup attempt was likely the best they could do. And it cost them a lot of money and troops. I would think so. A little so. fear is understandable, but it can't paralyze you. They've failed as many times as they've succeeded. Indeed. But humanity has lost its counselor. Yeah, that's yeah, that's The bad. Alliance Parliament is destroyed, and the Prime Minister's dead. The line of succession Ooh. is getting pretty short. Crap. How long do you expect any new Alliance administration to last? I, I wonder if I'm supposed to have options over here. I wonder if I don't have a high enough thing. Leaders will rise. You can't lose hope. Our enemies won't rest until they've taken the last human being. Well, they won't until rest until then. They can we're not beaten. Taken the last. Right now, anything. it's everyone's duty to step up. All right. Now, a question from Thessia. This is a long one. Commander, during your tribunal, some said you had Cerberus ties. I uh, used them. Uh oh. Thanks for your time, Commander. This is Diana oh. Allers for Battle Space. Good night and stay strong. Yeah, we're just in my Be room. Careful, Commander. You keep feeding me like this, and I'll follow you home. Uh. I think we're just fine in front of the camera. <laughs> oh, did you think? Uh, of course you did. Me and my big mouth. I'd better get out of here before I send another wrong signal. See ya, Commander. I hope we're still cool, though. <laughs> the camera one. It just like floated into my face and was like, huh. Oh, 103rd War Marine Marine Division. Invite James. Oh, uh, why does everybody have to come to my room? He didn't say he wanted to meet me up here. Uh, <laughs> why is there tarp? This is tarp. <gasps> I didn't even. Can I lay down? I didn't even realize. Oh my. Shepard, get out of the way. Oh, yes! Yes! I'm sorry, that's probably so loud. It's probably so loud. I'm like scooting my microphone away. Ah. Uh, and look, you can, I'm like, I'm pointing at the screen, but like, you can like see, kind of see the stars moving. Like, obviously, we've got like this like space time warp going on. There's probably, there's probably, there's scientific too, I know, but, but like in the background, like the stars, I don't know if they're actually moving or it's just like looking like that, but it looks like we are actually going forward. Like the stars are moving in the other direction. Oh, that's so cool. I wonder if I watch long enough if I can see a shooting star. No, I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. We saw a shooting star out here. It would be probably like a comet and we should probably get away from it. Oh, can I just stare at this? I love this game. I love space. I love the ocean. I love space, and I love the ocean. And I love, you think I'd love jelly, the Hanar because they're like space jellyfish, but they're not as cool looking as real jellyfish. <laughs> oh, it's been a long day, I'm so glad. James, I've got some time if you want to talk privately. On my way. Yeah, how do you, he doesn't know to come here. Hey man, how's it going? Hey man. Good, James, you? Good, good. Oh, he's all awkward being up here. Wow. So this is what I can look forward to when I get my own command. Jellyfish tank, man. It's worth it. You want your own ship, Vega? 
Yeah, maybe one day. When I'm old and I can't fight with shit anymore. You just come up here to make fun of your commander. Sorry, Lola. There you go, Lola. Do I you. guess... Maybe I got some things on my mind. I, I wanted to get your opinion on something. Shoot. Shoot. What did you do when they asked you to join the N7 program? Oh. I mean, was it a no-brainer for you, or did you think about it before accepting? Well, the smart thing to do would be to think about it. I mean, really, like, it's asking a lot of you. You can't just jump into something like that. The N7 program is a big deal, but it's also a big commitment. Exactly. I hear that. You get the best training, best equipment, best assignments. And they expect the best in return. Indeed. Yes, they do. Why are you asking? Well, even all the shit that's going on, somebody somewhere managed to track me down and forward an N7 commendation. Wasn't me. It's dated the same day the Reapers attacked Earth. Oh. You don't sound too thrilled. Well, aside from the fact that there won't be an N7 program if we don't win this war, I just... Being a soldier is the only thing I've ever been really good at. And not because I try. I lot to kick my ass out years ago. <laughs> Last time I had a command, I lost almost everyone. And they promoted me for it. I guess I'm just not sure if I'm ready to lead again. I don't know if I want that responsibility. Well, one of the options for Shepard is that she loses everybody, he or she, loses everybody on um, the Thresher Maw. Right, I think. I think it was the, the Thresher Maw. You mentioned that before. What went wrong? What didn't go wrong? We were out on patrol, checking on some strange readings. Then the collectors hit. But they hit the colony first. By the time we got back, most of the colonists had been subdued or abducted, including our CO, Captain Tony. So you were in charge? Yeah. We laid low for a bit, waiting for a chance to strike, but before we could... Oh, betrayed. We were betrayed. You can't... can't One of the colonists that. turned out to be a Cerberus spy working with the collectors. What? I had no choice. I killed him and destroyed the collector ship. Heck yeah. But it got ugly. We lost most of the colonists and all but one of my squad. Not exactly a textbook operation. Oh. Cerberus had a spy that was working for the collectors that betrayed them back when we were actively working against the collectors because they were attacking human colonies? That doesn't make any sense. Unless they explain that, there is a little bit of a story flaw there because that doesn't make diddly squat sense. Like, having a spy, sure, but one that betrays an entire human colony? Mmm. You can't blame yourself for being put in a tough situation. And if you were promoted, then something must have gone right. Sure, but... If you'd saved them all, would things have worked out better? I... Uh, I don't know. Yeah? I don't think so. For him and his the brain. Right choice is usually not the easy one. Yeah. Did you know that before you joined the N7? Yep. That's why I was asked. And it's why they asked you. There is not a single N7 that hasn't sacrificed either themselves or their soldiers at some point. Uh. So you think I should accept? Well... I mean, yeah, but at the same time, I, it, it is up to him, but... Assuming we survive this, that's a no-brainer. You're a damn good soldier, Vega. Don't waste that opportunity. I'll think about it. Seriously. If you don't mind, maybe don't mention this to anyone else. Of course not. Of course not. <laughs> Gracias. Well, De nada. I think I better get back to the hangar. Things here it's a little too soft for me. This what you the bed's a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> Are you flirting with me, Lola? I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> Thanks again, Shepard. Anytime. Don't mention the bed if you're not going to try flirting. Carnage. Woo! Woo! So this is the loyalty missions? You just you just talk to people and make them feel good? Or, or beat them into submission or something? Oh, right! We've got Caden! <sighs> Are his, is his and, um... James's armor like the exact same? 
You guys are matching. Well, kind of. You guys are little twins. I actually want to put Yavik in that one. Uh, no. Yeah, that one's cool. No. No. Uh, yes. Yeah, that's his original armor. I'm pretty sure. James looks cool with the, uh, not heavy duty armor on. Uh, let's see. In info? Uh. Why is the Alliance officer, like, vengeful ancient, pure biotic, launch AI? He's an AI. Why is, why is James's Alliance officer, like, Like, was it, was it, was it faded out? It's odd. Oh, there wasn't any messages, right? Yeah, I read them. Told you it's been a while. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. We spent 20 minutes just, you know, looking at jellyfish and the stars and talking to people. I freaking love this game because in a few minutes, I'm going to be kicking butt on an Ardat Yakshi planet. Mm, so excited! <laughs> Uh. Oh yeah, it's actually it gets really really interesting stuff like especially comparing like especially Oh, are you serious? I should probably talk to her. I'm kind of worried about her. Um, your name. Um I said talk to the marauder first. Yeah, just, just talk to him, you know? Just talk him down. Talk him down off the ledge, like I have to do to my computer almost daily. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, like, uh, the Asari beliefs in general, I think, I don't know if this is for sure or not, but they are very similar to Buddhists' uh, ideology. Krios is his last name. I kept calling Kolya Krios. <laughs> People were probably gonna punch themselves and me so hard because of that. I'm like, it's Krios. Yeah, I should probably go back and like edit that or something. Uh, be like, nope, I know now. I know. I remember back in the first game, everyone made a big deal about Jenkins dying, and like everybody mentioned it. Like it was really hard, and I'm like, I knew him for all of about five minutes. I wasn't really attached to him. It was kind of sad. He was like this overeager young soldier, but good to have Caden back. Oh yeah. We can always use a friendly guy. Yes, we can, can't we? A chocolate, chocolate. That's what we're doing. I just want to go look at the Ardent Yangshi. I mean, they look, they look the same. I know, but oh, hey. May I speak with you, Commander? Of course. Commander, an opportunity has come to my attention that may interest you. I love your hair. What's going on, Doctor? Refugees arrived at the Citadel recently in possession of military-grade medical supplies and equipment. Huh. In reviewing our inventories, I determined we have an excess of medical supplies to treat contagion, exposure, and malnutrition. Huh. They're equipped to help injured soldiers, and we have supplies to help suffering refugees. Precisely. Perhaps you could ply your charms to broker a trade. Uh, of course, but I would like to, I'd like to do all dialogue options. Isn't this something you could do yourself? War profiteering is running rampant, mm. and these refugees are wary of the Alliance military. They didn't trust me. You're right, but you are Commander Shepard, the hero. You could persuade me. In the face of the Alliance military, why would they trust me? <laughs> I'll find the refugees as soon as I can. Speak with Tactus. Many of the refugees near the Citadel docks look to him for leadership. Thank you, Commander. You do with access right? to their equipment and materials, I believe I could increase the effectiveness of our medigel. Oh. Chalk was look, you're getting skinnier. Is that game design or are you are you are you not eating? Oh game. Those loading screens kinda take something out of it sometimes. Okay, now let's go look the, not look at them. We're gonna go see I'm really excited. I mean obviously it's of course it says it's a monastery, so of course you're gonna think like monks, but sometimes I mean you think like Western monks where they're like boring bald head guys and they're not boy. If you're study that, that's cool. I actually was interested in the Irish monks for a while. Are you serious? <laughs> of course I wanna to talk to Anderson. Uh 
I knew I knew something would come up. I'm like, we're gonna go talk to the RIA. The whole no, no. Everyone just wants to make sure that my journal stays full forever and I never actually progress anywhere on the mission. And that every single tiny problem in the universe literally is taken care of because I'm a micromanager. It's my job definition, micromanager. Oh, excuse me, that was rude. Shepard. I was hoping you'd check in again. Of course, Anderson. You okay? Been putting my old academy training to use. Organizing the resistance. You know you've got quite a fan club back here. <laughs> Stop it. Any news we hear about the Normandy gives hope to the guys in the trenches. Good. I know what that's like, fighting in the dark. I'm glad we're making a difference. It's oh, more than that. A lot of these people have never held a gun in their life. Oh. When they heard that you managed to get the Torians and Krogan to cooperate, <laughs> that was a shot in the arm, Shepard. Of the one thing we're in short supply around here. Faith. That any of us will live to see another day. How bad is it? It could be worse, but not much. Can you still coordinate any kind of counterattack? No, no, just keep on We're hitting the Reapers every chance we get. Mostly guerrilla-style hit and runs. Just keep people But out. it's not enough. It's time we started focusing our oh, efforts. This is true. This is all true. Where? London. London? Something big is happening there. Our networks in the UK say the Reapers have arrived in huge numbers. What's in London? I've been there. It's very cool. Took two different uh, red bus, like the double-decker bus tours. They were awesome. Fish in a barrel. I like uh, the sound of that. Any more details? It's like the fish and no. chips. And that scares the hell out of me. What's going well, the Crucible will scare the hell out of the Reapers. <laughs> We're counting on it. Hopefully. Oh, and Shepard, I meant what I said earlier about Kai Lang. I read the dossier. The Reapers may seem like our biggest threat, but take it from me. Lang is a vicious bastard. Don't underestimate him. Noted. Then I'll let you get back to it. We need whatever good news you can send our way. That is enough. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, um, let's see. We had that update. Um, 103rd Marine Division. Commander Shepard's interview with Diana Allers about the attempt to take over the Citadel noted Cerberus's tactical missteps, which improved the morale of the Alliance ground forces. Good. I think that was it. Oh, I also want to say that it's really interesting um, and sort of odd, really odd that the Asari have all of a sudden decided to throw everything in with us. Like, I didn't have to do anything. Like, with the Krogans and the Turians, like, Commander. I had to work really hard to start getting anything from them. And the Asari are all of a sudden like, here, poof, have everything. Have all our scientists and fleets and blah, blah, blah. How's everything Come on, going? Dad. Oh, okay, that's it. Oh. Do you know how many strategy games are built from that? You play strategy games. A few. Most are too flashy, though. I prefer chess. Huh. I have a set made from rose quartz and hematite back home. I like the feel of something solid in my hands. Ah. Well, now that I know your weakness, we might have to try a game. <laughs> It'd be more fun than playing Edie. Edie doesn't sweat. <laughs> you sweat playing chess? No. Depends on how much fun we're having. Ah! Uh uh um <laughs> that was awkward <laughs> i thought she was gonna say like she makes her opponent sweat or something because she's probably i mean she is really really smart is it anderson oh right that sounds weird too oh too much philosophy <laughs> Ah, uh, Cerberus fighter base. No, I want to go investigate. Sorry. <laughs> Hopefully, this is the right, um, the right thing. Masana. Oh wait, no. Have I been here? Helion. Oh, this was the Mass Effect really that was having. Having decreased or increased traffic, I can't remember. This rocket ice planet, collecting data on extra activity according to star charts. 
that Asari had a small VI run system with satellites in geosynchronous orbit with the planet. The system broadcast the first morning that Reapers had come through the mass relay and mangled metal around the planet, indicates the Reapers did not appreciate their presence being advertised. Indeed. So they're already in. I did. I did. We saw the, uh, the Reaper out there. The dense atmosphere of nitrogen and carbon monoxide has turned Zosteros into a hothouse of enormous windstorms that blow toxic gas nonstop. Its most valuable deposits are cobalt and polonium, which netted it the number three spot on the list of amazingly poisonous planets on the popular vid show, Your Awesome Galaxy. <laughs> oh, God. The Reapers appear to have destroyed the camera drones here, as well as any scientific stations the Asari may have maintained. What's this one? Trategos. Trategos. It's cool looking. Largely frozen ice, except for liquid seas at the equator. Tritagos has the coldest winters of any Asari colony, taking it down to the second tier of habitability. Tritagos colonists are a hardy bunch, using the freezing winter months to test whether newcomers have what it takes to carve out a life on the planet. They are fighting, the colonists are fighting the Reapers in a guerrilla war, their best resource being submarine vehicles that can slip under the sea ice to mask their heat. Unfortunately, these are not proven good tools for taking back population centers for the Reapers, and for now, the colonists will have to be satisfied with commando actions to harass their synthetic oppressors. I would think the Reapers would have a hard time on a frozen planet, like synthetics, I would think. Did I hear a thing? Would have a hard time, um... With, with like really sub sub zero temperatures, the most temperate planet in the solar system, Cynthia, <laughs> is a terrestrial world with a light atmosphere, nitrogen, argon. Asari from neighboring Tritagos built mining operations around the southern pole, discovering mountains with veins of iridium and osmium. 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 I found something. Ooh, two things. Shh, don't get mad. Search scanner. Maybe I can recover a fighting unit. I don't want to take it though. Ooh, cool. Yes. Seven hundred and fifty. Ah, oh, I'm full. Fifty percent war assets recovered. Uh, should I try this one? <laughs> Holy crap. Dang it. Oh, I shouldn't have opened it, but I'm always worried I'm not 75%. I guess uh god, that makes sense. I don't I can't. I can't do it. Going straight across. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. There's probably more gas in that system. Okay, and I went right past it, and I'm... Ooh, that's a cool name. Shastesia. A hydrogen helium gas giant, Shastesia, has a twin to its more massive neighbor, Medokos, in more than one sense. These two are named for the semi-mythological pair, semi-mythological, pair of twins from Asari, of a, from Asari antiquity, who ruled the neighboring cities, who ruled neighboring city-states, and had a lifelong dialogue, they spelled dialogue wrong, about the best form of government. As the legend goes, Shastesia died before her vision of a democratic republic could be realized. Her sister, Medokos, then took up the cause, sacrificing personal power so that all free landowners in her city would have a voice. Although historians doubt that the changes were entirely altruistic, pointing to uprisings that demanded representation, the development was a step toward modern Asari government. They don't really have much of a formal government, really. I think, as far as I could tell, it's all, um, mostly, like... Not even planet to planet, it's like local locality to locality, like they decide what to do. It's a medium sized gas giant, although its mass exceeds that of Jupiter, the planet is somewhat denser and thus smaller. A large number of moons, planetesimals, and other detritus, detritus orbits Midokos as its gravitational pull has cleared the neighborhood of material that uh, might otherwise form an asteroid belt. Oh, okay. Cool one. Vileus. Vileus is a hydrogen methane ice giant drifting out in the frozen depths. Its orbit hosts rings of rock and ice as well as many moons, all drawn from what could otherwise be a secondary asteroid field, similar to Sol's Kuiper belt. <laughs> Vileus is named for a trickster figure in Asari mythology, a crafty animal called a mammal that seduced Asari maidens who then gave birth to hideously deformed offspring. In the tales, Vileus is caught 
and punished, but they serve as a warning to young Asari to not to initiate a bond with anyone they cannot trust. It is, it's not just like, you know, sex, it's like, like, just having sex, like a one night stand, like, for them it's much more than that, it's like a mind melt, so. Yeah, doing that with somebody you don't trust could be really, really bad for you. It's a desert, desertified, deserted, desertified rock planet with a thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and monoxide. The surface has a water, ice, as well as occasional liquid water near the volcanic areas. The planet has an abundant supply of zeolites, zeolites, which the Asari use for water purification as an ingredient in detergent and as a shielding material for disposal of radioactive waste. Hmm. <laughs> a small colony still maintains the mining equipment despite centuries of colonization. The Asari have developed Limetis, Limetis at a modest pace. The planet shows no sign of resource exhaustion. Good. It's still intact, though, which is nice. I don't think the uh, Reapers are here. Maybe they're not here, here, here. Okay, since the Reapers aren't getting mad, I'm gonna assume there's nothing. Ooh, so, oh, I'm freaking been going for a long time. Uh, Lizus is an unpopular garden world with characteristic unpopular garden world. Characteristics is just outside of the comfort zone of its Asari population. Its gravity is a little too high. That could be that could be disturbing. Its disease is a little too virulent, and the a little too, and the soil inhospitable for growing food. Further information is difficult to come by. The Asari government is uncharacteristically silent about Lizus. Normally, a garden world settled so long ago would be highly populated, but the light the little light pollution can be seen. On Lesu little light pollution can be seen on Lesus's night side. Population unknown. That's be why did it give me all the information in the little briefing in my journal and not in uh not on this. Maybe this is just what everybody can see, you know. All right, we'll land, and then I'll probably have to call it unless something really crazy happens, which is what happened on the set at all. That was that was crazy. I'm still kind of disappointed that I can't talk to Barlavon. At least it says he's still there, but I totally didn't see him. Let's bring Caden. Um. Uh, should we bring Liara? The old team, excluding Garrus. Sorry, I really like having Garrus around. And that'd be two biotics. I don't really need two biotics. But it is, it's an Asari planet, so let's bring Liara. Plus, it's not just an Asari planet, it's like one where it's like a lot is going on with the Asari. Um, so I think I like what I've got. Yeah. I upped it. Oh, right, I upped it, and so hopefully everything is awesome. Liara, I don't think I have... Uh, I did a long time ago. Well, she's... And everything has upgraded for her as, I, as I've gotten the better ones. Hmm. So this is the one I have right now. This one has a higher weight, higher capacity, no, no, higher weight, lower capacity, lower fire rate, same damage, higher accuracy, though. Um, this one, higher weight, lower capacity, higher fire rate, damage pretty much the same. Here, let's compare it to, oop, no, um, see this one. So the other one is improved. I wonder I wonder if their load time is affected by the weight they're carrying. Because it's not the same as mine, and I thought it was, but it's not. Um flippity doodah. I don't know. Uh increases the capacity. Oh. Uh scope. Increases its stability. No. Uh, increases the capacity and accuracy. I didn't see one for damage, so we'll just do that. 
Wait, what gun does she? Ooh, should I have her use this? Uh, I bet you if I upgraded that one, it'd be cool. That's my, my newest one. Mm, the damage is higher. Accuracy is about the same. Capacity is lower, though. Mm -hmm, too bad. Let's see what it does. Um, increases melee damage. Increases the rounds. Increases the damage. Oh, holy moly, by 20%. Keep it that. Increases the accuracy. Reduce weapons weight. Increase headshot damage. Let's do the, um, no, not the melee. That one. Yeah. Except. Now, Caden, he gets an assault rifle and a pistol. Uh. Should I have him use the particle rifle? Because, uh, that was awesome. Particle rifle is really cool when, uh, Yavik uses it. Low damage, though. Let's try. I think this was the newest one I've got. Let's compare it to like. Oh. This one's. The Vindicator's accuracy is way better. Holy crap. Uh, that's why I love the face on. Uh, let's just. Stick with the Revenant. We'll mod it. Uh, increases with stability, increases the rounds, increases the damage. Yeah. Almost always increases the accuracy. Sure. Um, that one's really high. Let's give him the scorpion. Increases headshot damage. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oops, good. Holy crap, we're gonna have a ton of points to give Caden. Oh man. Alright, I did level him up before, I do remember that. Let's get Reeve all the way up there. I liked that one. Uh, let's increase the recharge speed. Increases effectiveness in armor against armor barriers. Increases damage by 30. Duration by 30. Increases damage by duration. That's a good one. Oh, wow. Should we just go with the overall route? Yeah, let's go with the overall route. Um, should we finish up? Let's increase his biotic powers because I've got tech. Increases squad mate tech and biotic powers or increases the recharge squared. Let's do that one. It's because he's an alliance officer. Um, and then let's just do uh, cryo one more and overload one more. All right, very cool. Singular. I have missed singularity. Increase for twenty damage per second to limit the target. Yeah, let's do that one. Uh, detonate singularity for that is to inflict three hundred and thirty damage. If I knew what these numbers meant, that would be nice. Uh, expand it for ten seconds. Yeah. Let's do that. Um, and then let's actually up her warp ammo. No, wait. Oh, I love warp. I do increase damage by 40, increase duration by 60. Uh, yeah, let's do that one. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Well, now that we've got all the housekeeping done. 
Uh, hopefully we don't jump right into something, because I want to explore. It's going to be a cool place. I've never been, well, okay, besides Ilium. Been to Ilium. Never been to a sorry planet. Especially a secret planet. Well, no, it's not a secret planet, but the stuff that goes on is secret. And it's about the Arctic Young Shape, for heaven's sake. I'm like terrified, like, <gasps> you know what we're gonna find you here? Any information on the mission, Liara? We're gonna find Banshees. I did. And I now understand why High Command wanted to hide it. We're headed to an Ardat Yakshi monastery. Yep. Ardat Yakshi? Like Morinth? Yep, 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 yep. Morinth chose to be a killer. These Ardat Yakshi isolated themselves to avoid that. That's true. But it doesn't mean they're harmless. Their urge to feed uh... can be powerful. That's why High Command sent in commandos to investigate the monastery's distress signal. Magnified biotics, eh? Great. Oh, good thing I got What's two biotics. Strategy? If there was a chance the Ardat Yakshi could break loose, the commandos were to purge the monastery. Purge? You mean destroy? They would have brought heavy explosives with them, yes. Uh, I would rather just do that, but... Morinth was dangerous, but are the Ardat Yakshi this big of a threat? I'm so open-minded. Morinth was just hitting her stride. Ardat Yakshi who kill leave behind astronomical body counts. It's why they can never be free, and why they're such a great source of shame to the Asari. Are you That's okay? why High Command won't rest until this place is destroyed. They'd never risk a single Ardat Yakshi getting loose. Hmm. Don't assume anything. Maybe the Ardat Yakshi sent out the distress call. For a bad reason. If Sari want us to destroy this place, I need to know what happened. Yeah. Agreed. Once we give a report to High Command, they'll stop wasting lives here. She just started to float. Did you see that? Oh, wow. Uh, is that possible? Can you do that? Is that physically possible? Find Asari Commandos. Okay, we will do that in the next episode. All right, I'm really excited about this. I'm really excited. It's been a good episode. Jellyfish, talking, and Arat Yakshi. All right.